AGB and I'm here in awe actually because I'm with the wonderful Dr. Howard Murad who is um, the king of skincare as far as I'm concerned. There is nothing this man doesn't know. Skincare but also attitude to life with skin which is to me what truly genuinely matters that you live a life that makes your skin the best it can be um, and I think that's something that people underestimate. Do you agree? Absolutely. It's not just what you put on your skin, it's what you put in your heart. Mm. Oh, I love that. And so with your, um, with your whole lifetime, um, you've encompassed so many aspects like art and therapy and the, um, the wisdom of inclusive health and mm -hmm. beauty. How does that work? Can you explain? Well, inclusive health means that everything, every single cell in your body is connected in order to have beautiful skin every other organ in your body has to be working at its very best. Uh, and also, it also means that the final common pathway of aging, disease, wrinkling is going from a state of full hydration to less hydration. So when you were born, you were 75% water, you're probably closer to 50% now. And as time goes on, we have less and less. We can feel that in our skin. It's drier today than it was 10 years ago. It'll be drier still 10 years from now. And that's a natural progression. It's a natural progression, even if you lived a perfect life. Okay. At some point, every one of us is going to die. Every one of us is going through that process of being less hydrated. Mm. So let's look at what we can do for your skin. On the surface, we can certainly use proper moisturizers to put on your skin to moisturize the very surface of your skin, predominantly the stratum corneum, the top layer but maybe also within the epidermis as well. Mm -hmm. But the epidermis is only 10%, maybe 15% yeah. of your skin. What about the rest of the skin, which is predominantly collagen? That we have to feed from inside. Yeah. So the way I like to tell people to consume water is to eat your water yeah. instead of drinking it. It's a great philosophy. I love it. Eating water-rich foods. Mm. And tell me what's your favorite vegetable? <laughs> um, yes, I love a cucumber, cucumber sandwich. I know you love cucumbers I love too. Cucumbers. They're amazing. Uh -huh. Is it 96% water? Yes, at least. Yeah. So, okay. Mm. An ounce of cucumber is almost an ounce of water. Yeah. So you're getting the same amount of water, but what else you're getting is roughage, mm. you're getting all kinds of phytonutrients, you're making your body alkaline, resistant to cancer and bone loss, mm. and you're boosting your immune system. Indeed. What else would you yeah. want? Yeah, yeah. So there's so much more to eating your water. It's a little more complicated than that, but yeah. basically that's it. Which are your other favorites? Watermelon is also rich in water as uh -huh. well. So both, they're both good. Okay. okay. Then the other thing I like mm. um, is to look at other ways that we can encourage more water. And believe it or not, it's exercise. Right. Now, everybody tells me, when I do exercise, I perspire and I'm yeah. drier. Uh -huh. You may be thirsty, but you're not drier. And finally, the other thing, which may be almost the most important, is stress. When you're under stress, you have underarm perspiration, sweaty palms. Yeah. You don't realize it, but you're really dry. So inclusive health means if I'm going to make your skin healthy, mm. I have to make every cell in your body more hydrated, more healthy. I'd like you to do some exercise, I'd like you to eat better, and I'd like you to reduce your stress. So why do you think people don't really appreciate, because I know it's your philosophy of eating water as opposed to drinking, why do you think people still don't grasp that need to hydrate the cells as much as, as your philosophy does? You know, that's a good question. I don't have a good answer. <laughs> Because <laughs> oh, gosh. to me, it's obvious yeah. that when you're eating water-rich foods, mm. it's healthier for you than just drinking water. Yeah. Uh, but somehow or other, people have been inundated with this concept of eight glasses of water a day. Mm. Mm. And, you know, maybe you do need eight glasses of water a day, but it doesn't have to come from just water. Yeah. It could come from the foods that you eat. Yes. And it's much more sense. It's much more sense yeah, because yeah. you're getting so much more. Mm. And if nothing else, the water that you eat in fruits and vegetables and other sources that are full of water is gradually released. It's in the structure of the food. So unlike water, which goes right through you, this gradually is released over time. And it's, it's helping more gradually and more likely to stay in the cells. Yeah. And so the, the stress impact, that was very interesting because I think, um, again, we all 
are at serious burnout. And there's mm -hmm. some, some amazing statistic recently that six out of ten women think they're burnt out and they're only 35. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a long way to mm -hmm. go still to keep... Right. What, <clears throat> what have you seen, in, especially in your career, where stress is impacting more and more on, on people? Absolutely. You know, I think there are two kinds of stress. Mm. One is traditional stress. For example, a broken arm, a divorce in the family, something like that. Mm. When we look at that, what's happening is we deal with it. You yeah. break your arm, you go to the doctor, you get it fixed. You get a divorce, a death in the family, you grieve, you go through it. Eventually, you're dealing with it. Mm. But the stress of modern living, which I call cultural stress, yeah. is constant, pervasive, and ever-increasing. Mm. What is that? Digital dependency. The average person at work at Murad spends 14 hours a day on their cell phone or their computer. Oh. 14 hours a day. It's your fault. <laughs> I know. I'm making them work hard. <laughs> but it, it's not just work. It's yeah, like yeah, they're nice. on Facebook and answering, mm. you know, looking at their apps and things like that. Yeah. So... That's 14 hours, mostly in isolation, yeah. because even when they're working and they're with other people, they're by themselves. Yeah. And they're going out to lunch or dinner, they're on their own cell phone with the other people on their own cell phone texting somebody else. Mm -hmm. So what you're getting is more and more isolation, mm -hmm. more and more yeah. the need to be perfect, because so much is expected of you. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, you had your work and you got home, you were done. But now, work never ends. It's 24-7 mm. is what's expected of you. So you, you're never over that, and you're constantly on your emails and things like that. And then what begins to happen, you have a sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting. Yes. You don't have to go out. You know what? I don't oh, want to yeah. go to the movies because, God forbid, there's a terrorist. Mm -hmm. I'll stay home. I can just watch Netflix. I don't need to go to the grocery store. They'll deliver it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to get any clothes. I'll get it delivered from Amazon. Mm. You don't have to go anywhere. You just sit. And what does that do to you? A, it makes you more isolated, more lonely, more likely to have chronic disease, mm. and worse, more angry and, and hostile. Nice. So we begin to feel it's me against you yes, and yes. you against me. And there's less likely to have good communication, good mm -hmm. relationships. So that's the worst kind of stress because we're not dealing with it. I, don't, I think we all know we're experiencing it. We know there's always more traffic, more pollution, more emails to answer, but we don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. So, and we can't change it. It's only going to get worse. It won't be any better a year from now or 10 years from now. It's gonna be worse. Yeah. My solution, goes back to understanding water. When you had the most water in your body was you when you were a toddler. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the attributes of a toddler that you have lost. Maybe not you, but other people, <laughs> you haven't lost. No, it. I still giggle <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, you know, let's see a toddler's walking in this room right now. Mm -hmm. Tell me about her. She slipped and fell 10 times before she got here. She got right up. Don't sit up. And she's not afraid to fall, to yeah. fail, right? Yeah, she yeah, yeah. got up and mm. got up and she was playing in the mud before she came here. She was having fun. She was laughing, giggling, and she comes in laughing, giggling, but she has mud on her clothes. Does she mm. care? Mm. No, she doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. She doesn't judge herself. Yeah. She doesn't know that these other people are better than her. She or sings and dances and twirls around. And yeah. without music. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need anything. She creates her own life. Yeah. Yeah. And she's more creative. She's looking at things around the room and she says, what's that? How come we yeah. have this? We're yeah. more inquisitive. We lose all of that as we age. Mm. And that is what makes us happy. Mm. Especially the idea of not having to be perfect. I think that's a real issue, especially with women. I yeah. think and in a way, that's what you're talking about. It's so stressful yeah. that you can never be good enough. You feel like a failure all the time. And that's why you burn out. It doesn't mean me. Can I just throw that Everyone right else but you. <laughs> not me. Just not me. I'm, I don't have to be perfect. Uh, that's it. Okay. I don't want to be perfect. No. Yes. No. no, you're quite right. Today's modern living is it's terrifying. It's, it's Especially very... as we were saying, um, for, for the younger generation coming uh, along, Generation Z, as they're called, so because much. nothing comes after Z, right. does it? Oh, God, help us. Oh, God, you better have something else. <laughs> oh, no. Murad's must-haves, Murad's must-dos. Well, to me, the must-haves is almost number one, 
is as much as possible return to the toddler. Mm -hmm. I tell people, I ask people actually, I ask them, who are you? And they'll say, oh, I'm Mr. Jones, Mrs. Smith, whatever. I say, no, who are you at your core? Mm -hmm. And it really is the toddler that you used to be. When you didn't judge yourself, mm -hmm. you were more creative. The more you do that, the better. Yeah. And if nothing else, act like a toddler. Dance even when you don't hear the music. Mm -hmm. These are some of the words I, I like for my patients. And, and you embrace art therapy too. And, and art therapy. Which is lovely. And the yeah. way I do art therapy yeah. is the way a toddler would. Have you, I, Sit down I would on love the floor. Isn't oh, it? besides telling me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so, first of all, we give coloring paper and crayons to oh, everybody. Gorgeous. And we ask them to color. Mm. Where do they color? Inside the line. Oh. Right? When you were a toddler, what uh, would you color? Yeah. All over the place. Probably on the wall, actually. On the wall, even, <laughs> right. So, when you were three years old, mm. your, your society tamed you already and yeah. limited your potential. Mm -hmm. You already, you know, we talk about think out of the box. Now you had a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then we teach that lesson. And mm. then we go outside, have an area where we do some painting. Mm. And I'll go to the, to the canvas and I have paint. And, you know, as, a, as a, an adult, when you're asked to paint, you start with looking at the canvas and saying, I'm going to draw a cat, or I'm going to draw a tree, or whatever it is in your mm. mind you want to draw. But as a child, your life was anything. You weren't mm. limited. Mm. So what we do is I say, I'm going to teach you how to draw art, this perfect art class. Mm. I want you to learn. Watch me. And I turn my head and I throw the paint on the side. <laughs> and wherever it goes, it yeah. goes. And everybody's laughing and Long. giggling yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I, I spray it with water. Yeah. I turn the canvas around and turn it around. And everyone's laughing and mm. giggling. And believe it or not, most of the time the art looks okay. Yeah. And so, first of all, A, people begin to understand what I'm talking about, mm. returning to the toddler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B, they're having fun, they're laughing maybe for the first time in weeks, yeah. giggling, belly laughs even. And they go home with a piece of art that looks good. Mm. They're happy. That's adorable. So that's the way I do my art therapy classes. Yeah. And everyone is, is thrilled. Thank you so much. That lovely Dr. Murad who um, has the most greatest philosophies on life. And, um, and literally, I think, um, if, you, if you check him out, got a great blog as well which I love on his website um, that it's just we have to appreciate that um, that living is the most important part of everything about beauty so catch you soon